how we're going to measure heat energy. Heat energy. Think about heat energy. Heat energy is very different from solid that you can weight liquid you can put onto container. But heat is something f so abstract and um, you can feel it, but you you very hard to make measurement out of it. And so scientists really have to find a way how we're going to measure heat, this heat energy. And then scientists come up to a clever way like this. He put a liter of water with a thermometer. On his theory, he say, okay, of this heat, this heat will transfer the heat onto the water. And now this water will be heating up. And so you reflect onto the temperature. Look at the temperature. Now the temperature change. So how about if I cannot measure the heat, if I cannot measure this part, the heat, can I measure this part? Can I measure this part? So he come to a formula. He say, okay, if whatever the heat release will heat up to whatever of the liter of water causing the temperature change, I repeat, if the heat release onto the water causing this liter of water temperature rise. So we, we can measure one liter. One liter is very easy to measure. Water heat capacity is a constant. Temperature rise, you can use read from the thermometer. Now, instead of to measure this abstract H, I'm measuring this mc and delta t and if this increase, this temperature will increase. If this decrease, this temperature will also decrease. So you can say this delta h is reflecting the mc delta t. So from now on, I'm going to say this delta H, this heat energy equal to mc delta t. And that's how scientists use this as a base for measurement. And now let's do an example to show you. Calculate the heat energy required. I want to find out how much energy heat required to heat up 500 gram of water to make the temperature rise by from 20 degree to 22 degree. So I apply this M, 500 gram of 4.18, temperature rise by two degree. I want to find how much is the temperature change. In the graph means I know I would make 500 gram of water 4.18, temperature rise by two degree. How much energy do I need to inject to make this change? So now I do it on the calculation. I need 4180 joules. So that means if I put 4180 joules of energy in, so this energy will heat up the water and make this 500 gram of water to rise to degree change. So oh, another unit, kilojoules. So this become 4.18 kilojoules. So now you can see I use this H very much reflecting on this MC delta T change very nicely. That's how we come to this way of calculation of delta H. On this delta H, on last question, we do very nicely, but now this time I add one more factor, the substance, because we need to know how much substance of fuel that we burn. And now with this question, now that we, we, we do. 
Now I'm going to calculate the heat of combustion of I burning one mole of a substance and it make 10 liter of water rise from 20 degree to 41 degree. Now I apply to the formula. So of this formula you say of this 10 liter of water temperature rise by the different 21 degree. So it reflect in I burning one mole of substance. I don't know how much that is the heat produced, but I know that this 10 liter of water temperature rise by 21 degree. And now I want to find out this H unknown. And now we work out by the equation. Now it give me for a 77.8 kilojoules per mole means in one mole it will burn a 77.8 kilojoules and that much kilojoule of heat energy can heat up 10 liter of water and the temperature rise by 21 degree and that's what it means and keep in mind of this unit kilojoules per mole. What is kilojoules per mole mean? Careful, you have two parts. One part is the heat energy. Kilojoules is the heat energy part, which is 877.8 kilojoules. And there's another part, which is the substance of fuel. The substance of fuel, that methane you burn, you're burning one mole. And that's what it means. Carometer. Carometer. On previous session, we talking about to measuring of this heat energy by using this liter of water and the temperature rise because the heat release will heat up the water. That's very good. But this concept has certain disadvantage because our, while are on the heating process, what will happen? You will have some heat loss to the outside. And so when you lost heat to the outside, this temperature will be in accurate measure. So this will make the measurement inaccurate because lost heat to the surrounding. So scientists have to find a better way to improve this process. And now, he using this carometer. This is called the bomb carometer. It look the shape different, but under the same principle. I show you. The heat release to heat up the water. And this is also a heat release to heat up the water. And the improvement of it is these things have this is made of a bombshell and this one is a, a insulated jacket. This insulated jacket is thick and the heat cannot escape to the surrounding. So it will it would will, will improve the measurement. So the heat cannot escape to the surrounding here or here. So Whatever the measure of the heat will be only inside of this MCAT calculation. And another improvement of this shell is made of metal steel bomb. So this is very strong. It will not cause explosion. It will not break or blow up. And the whole, so the whole concept is this will have no heat loss. So if there's no heat loss, you expect all the heat will be fully transferred to the surrounding and flu fully reflecting on this temperature rise. So that is the improvement. Now let's, let's look onto this bomb carometer now. Here, as I repeat, outside is made of an insulated water jacket. So the heat cannot escape to the surrounding. Inside of it is uh, is made of steel, so it's very strong. It will won't cause blow up. So.
So now let's see. When you have the fuel inside of it, and you spark it and to make it, now when it burn, what will happen? Now the delta H will getting very very hot, and the heat will all transfer to the surrounding water like this. Water is getting very hot. Now the water getting very hot, and the temperature is rise now. And student understand the relationship of this delta H change equal to this M C delta T change, and this is the way to measure of the delta H. Thank you.